The Southern Colonies, Chapter 7. We've already done this read aloud. Lesson 1. Settling the South. What to know. How did geography affect where people settled in the southern colonies? Describe the location and physical setting of the southern colonies. Explain why the southern colonies were founded. Discuss how slavery affected the southern colonies. Words to know from Quizlet. Constitution. Debtor. Back country, people to know, George Calvert, Cecilius Calvert, James Oglethorpe, places, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. You are there. The year is 1650 and you stand on a hillside looking down at the huge bay below. Two months ago, you boarded, you boarded a ship in England to come to the Maryland colony. The land looks very different from the crowded streets of London. Fields of crops stretch as far as you can see. You left London because you couldn't find a job there. Here, you'll be working for a wealthy landowner. From the looks of things, you'll be working a lot. The Chesapeake Bay takes its name from the American Indian word. You can give that a try if you want. <laughs> Meaning Great Shellfish Bay. This painting shows an artist's view of the founding of Maryland. Who do you think people are sh shown carry? Why do you think people are shown carrying a cross? Maryland. Let's set up our notes for this section. And let's check out what the question is at the end. What are the reasons for the founding of the Maryland colony? So Maryland, question mark, why? Why was Maryland founded? In our two column notes, this will be on the left side. Let's read. The Maryland colony was founded by the Calverts, a family of wealthy English landowners. The Calverts, who were Catholic, wanted to build a colony in North America that not only made money, but also provided a refuge for Catholics. Like the Quakers who founded Pennsylvania, Catholics in England could not worship as they wished. George Calvert, also called Lord Baltimore, had been a member of the Virginia Company. Calvert asked King Charles I to give him a charter for a new colony along the Chesapeake Bay to the north of Virginia. Calvert died before the charter was signed in 1632. His oldest son, Cecilius Calvert, became the new Lord Baltimore and the owner, proprietor, of the new colony. He called the colony Maryland. Cecilius Calvert chose his brother, Leonard, to be Maryland's first governor the Calvert brothers had learned from the unfortunate experiences at Jamestown, right? The starving years in the colony of Virginia. And they planned their colony carefully. There would be no starving time in Maryland. In 1633, the Calvert sent the first colonists to Maryland. Most of these colonists arrived as indentured servants. The ships carrying them landed near the mouth of the Potomac River. There, the colonists founded their first settlement, now called St. Mary's City. 
So what were the reasons for founding Maryland Colony? With the passage of the Toleration Act by Lord Baltimore, Cecilius Calvert, Maryland became known throughout the English colonies for its religious freedom. Our next section in our two column notes, Life in Maryland and Virginia. So the question down here says, what physical features did the two have in common? What was life like for Maryland and Virginia? Let's read. The Maryland colony had much in common with its older neighbor, Virginia. The two colonies shared the same relative location next to the Chesapeake Bay and the Potomac River. They had the same mild climate and tobacco grew in the fertile land along the coastal plain. Some colonists in Maryland grew rich from huge tobacco plantations. However, most struggled on small farms. Many of Maryland's farmers had come to the colony as indentured servants. Maryland's government helped former servants by giving each of them land, clothes, tools, and barrels of corn. In the early 1700s, more people lived in Virginia than in Maryland. In fact, Virginia had become the largest English colony in North America and, in 1699, moved its capital to Williamsburg. Virginia and Maryland had similar governments. Both colonies had governors and both elected representatives to assemblies. However, the king controlled the royal colony of Virginia while the Calverts controlled the proprietary colony of Maryland. Unlike Virginia, Maryland welcomed many different religions. In 1649, the Maryland Assembly passed the Toleration Act, which allowed religious freedom in the colony for all Christians. And again, remember we were talking about that they, coming from England, there was one state religion, the Church of England, and so no other churches were allowed. What physical features did Maryland and Virginia have in common? Beyond that, they also had similar The Carolina Colonies. Let's set up our two column notes. The Carolina Colonies. Why was the Carolina Colony hard to govern? Let's read. As the populations of Maryland and Virginia grew, some colonists started building villages and farms farther south. In 1663, England's new king, Charles II, granted land for another colony called Carolina. The new colony stretched all the way from Virginia to Spanish Florida. The charter divided Carolina among eight English leaders called the Lord's Proprietors. In 1669, these leaders wrote a constitution or a written plan of government for Carolina. The constitution allowed free male colonists to elect some leaders and make some laws. Still, most of the power belonged to the proprietors and the king. The Carolina colony soon became hard to govern. It covered a huge area, and the colonists often ignored laws they disliked. In 1712, the colony was divided into two new colonies, North Carolina and South Carolina. In hilly North Carolina, farmers grew tobacco and corn. 
In contrast, farmers in South Carolina had problems growing tobacco in the flat, swampy land. When settlers from the West Indies arrived with their African slaves, they started growing rice and the colony began to prosper. Make money. Rice soon became South Carolina's most important crop. Why was it hard to govern? Tobacco below was mostly grown in the Upper South. And let's look at the map. What was the southernmost city? So the smaller names are the cities. What's the southernmost city that we see here? And our next section on our two column notes is Georgia. Our check, reading check question, why did James Oglethorpe found the Georgia colony? So maybe, why was Georgia founded? How was Georgia founded? Georgia, question mark? Let's read. England, France, and Spain claimed the area to the south of South Carolina. By 1727, England's new ruler, King George II, knew that if he did not send colonists there, he might lose control of the area. Then, a wealthy English leader named James Oglethorpe had an idea. Why not send imprisoned English debtors, people who owed money, to settle the colony? The settlers would defend the land. The settlers would defend the land. Oglethorpe also hoped to give the debtors a chance to start a new life. He wrote, By such a colony, many families who would otherwise starve will be provided for and made masters of houses and lands. Oglethorpe's idea seemed like the perfect solution, and King George II gave Oglethorpe and his partners a charter. They named their colony Georgia in honor of the king. In 1733, the first group of colonists arrived in Georgia and founded the settlement of Savannah. Hoping to avoid conflicts, Oglethorpe did not allow trading with American Indians. He also limited the size of farms and did not allow slavery. As a result, Georgia had no plantations at first. However, the settlers were divided on the issue of slavery. By the 1740s, some settlers were illegally importing slaves to the colony. In 1751, Georgia's leaders decided to allow slavery. Over time, Georgia's successful economy was a result of plantations and the labor of enslaved Africans. So why did he found the Georgia colony? Last section. Let's look at this. Heading west. And let's go over this geography first. Heading west in a covered wagon. The Great Wagon Road. From Pennsylvania, the Great Wagon Road passed through the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia and along the eastern side of the Blue Ridge Mountains. The land there was hilly and travel on the road was difficult, but it was the only way to get wagons loaded with household goods to the back country. Thousands of people followed the old American Indian trail. Among them was Daniel Boone, 
who later became a well-known explorer. Heading West In the early 1700s, most cities, towns, farms, and plantations in the 13 colonies were located near the coast, on the coastal plain. At that time, few colonists had settled in the Piedmont, the land between the coastal plain and the Appalachian Mountains. Settlers called this frontier region the Back Country because it was beyond or in back of the area settled by Europeans. The thick forest, hills, and lack of roads made travel to the backcountry difficult. However, by the mid-1700s, many settlers in the 13 colonies began to move to areas west of the coastal plain. From Pennsylvania, large numbers of German immigrants had begun moving into the backcountry of Virginia and the Carolinas. To get there, the settlers followed an earlier American Indian trail. As more people used the trail, it became wide enough for wagons to use. This widened trail eventually became known as the Great Wagon Road. So heading west, what made it difficult to reach the back country? Primary sources. Analyze drawings. The village of Sequitan was an American Indian settlement near the Pamlico River in what is now North Carolina. I hope I pronounced that correctly. This drawing of the village was made by John White, an early English colonist. So let's find one American Indians hunting deer, two American Indians gathering for a feast, three cornfields, four ceremonial dance circle. Why do you think the Indians planted corn close to their homes? And it looks like we do have one more section. So here's our last section. Please, in your two column notes on the left side, conflicts with American Indians. What were the conflicts with American Indians? What caused conflicts with American Indians? What effect did settlers have on the American Indians in the southern colonies? Let's read. Thousands of Cherokee, Creek, Powhatan, and other American Indian tribes lived in the areas that became the southern colonies. As more Europeans arrived, their settlements began to spill over onto American Indian lands. Just as it had in the New England colonies, anger and resentment grew as settlers built their villages and farms on American Indian sites. In North Carolina, for example, German and Swiss settlers destroyed the Tuscarora, Tuscarora village of Chautauqua. Chautauqua. I'm trying to pronounce that, guys, <laughs> in order to build the settlement of New Bern. Some colonists believed that the remaining American Indians were not treated fairly either. During that time, one settler said the other colonists had, quote, cheated these Indians in trading and would not allow them to hunt near their plantations and took away from them their game, animals, arms, weapons, and ammunition, bullets essentially, or bows and arrows. In 1711, these and other land losses called, caused the Tuscarora, 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 okay, Tuscarora. In 1711, these and other land losses caused the Tuscarora 
to attack several settlements. The Indians hoped to frighten away the settlers, but their attacks led to the Tuscarora War. By 1713, when the war finally ended, 950 Tuscarora Indians had been either killed or captured and sold into slavery. Settlers in the southern colonies kept pushing Indians away from their lands. Some Indians were captured and sent to the West Indies to work on sugarcane plantations. Others died while fighting the colonists over land or trade. Even peaceful Indian groups died in large numbers from European diseases such as smallpox and measles because they did not have antibodies in their immune systems for those diseases they were new. As their numbers decreased, several American Indian groups decided to move west to lands that European settlers had not yet reached. As they left, however, the settlers began to move still further west inland. What effect did settlers have on American Indians in the southern colonies? Creek Indian Mound was a center of religion and government for American Indians in the P.D. River Valley in North Carolina. In summary, the southern colonies were made up of Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Some settlers came for land and others for religious reasons. Indentured servants and enslaved Africans were brought to the region as workers. Over time, conflicts grew between settlers and American Indians. Questions for discussion. Think about what your answer would be for each of these questions. Number one, how did geography affect where people settled in the southern colonies? Number two, use the term debtor in a sentence about the founding of Georgia. Number three, which southern colony was founded as a refuge for Catholics and who founded it? Number four, how did the physical characteristics of the backcountry affect the movement of settlers? Number five, identify one primary source and one secondary source in this lesson. Explain how you identified each.